Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the Conflict of Nick channel. I'm your host Nick, and today we're going to be continuing um, the basics explanation series of every unit in Conflict of Nations. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the uh, naval tab, aka surface vessels. Now I just want to mention um, I have not uploaded recently, um, and I do apologize for that, but um, as you guys know there have been some seriously um, world worldwide affecting um, global events that have been going on and it's really had me down and you know it takes um, you know time and effort to make videos um, and why not continue the series that everybody has loved so far I cannot believe how much support this series has gotten it is truly amazing to me and I'm so glad you guys enjoy it so I need to finish this for you guys because that is my obligation to you so thank you so much for sticking with me even though I haven't been around so why don't we get started Diving right in, we have the naval tab. It is going to be the seventh, the seventh tab from the left. These are going to be your naval vessels, aka your surface vessels, your ships. Submarines we're going to be discussing along with missiles in the next video. Um, so today we're going to be sticking with these five ships you see here. So the first ship that we're going to be talking about is at the top of the list and it is going to be the Corvette. Now, the Corvette is a starting vessel. Um, it's very cheap, and um, I just want to give a full disclosure for uh, these vessels we're going to be discussing today. Um, there is no best doctrine for any of these, actually. Um, so they're all going to be the same stats for every doctrine. So the Corvette, it's going to be your starting vessel. This takes 30 minutes to research, um, and this is the only ship that has the shortest amount of research time like that. It is going to cost 1.5k supplies to build, and this is actually one of the only ships, I think the only ship, that costs supplies to build, and of course some electronics as all ships will. It is going to require a level 2 naval base and an arms industry, and really, taking a look at this thing, you can see um, that this, this ship really fills um, one role, and in my opinion, this ship, I think, is best early game. If you're ever going to use it, or even use it for that matter, um, really the situations you want to even use this thing is, uh, let's say you start as my country, and you have a bunch of enemies around you, um, or you're an island, um, and you want to keep your enemies out. This is the best strategy to go for an island. You get corvettes right away, they can't touch you. Um, but in most cases, the corvette isn't that useful, but in the early game, it actually can be pretty nice. You know, you can get some early bombardments off, um, kill enemy transport convoys because that's a common way people get around early game without airfields and stuff So overall that's kind of what it would be used for so at level one we're going to be looking at a 50 range um, Radar and sonar detecting ship that can do 1.5 to ground targets um, soft targets one to uh, armor it has some point defense against jets and helicopters, and it's doing 5 damage to ships and 4 to subs. This is actually um, decent against subs because it does get the sonar, which is a unique quality about it. Um, and so it's not horrible against submarines. Um, but as you see, um, there is some downsides to um, this Corvette in terms of water. Um, in high seas, which is where most combat will happen, um, not compared to uh, coastal waters um, this thing actually gets half the hit points it does in coastal waters because this is a coastal defense ship so don't take these into deep water it's not going to be good for you it's going to get slaughtered and it's going to actually be slower so max level what are we looking at for the corvette it is capping out at i believe 75 range and it is getting the same sonar detection of 75 it can reveal the stealth of submarines, obviously, um, and it can launch a single cruise missile and also deploy uh, elite armament. Now, the thing about reveal stealth, uh, apart from level 1, that you can probably see here, is that level 1 has sonar, but can't reveal the stealth. That means you could detect sonar contacts, but actually can't reveal the submarine itself, so you can't see whose submarine it is, what level it is, how many there are, etc, etc. So, at max level, we're doing 3 damage to soft targets, 2 to hard targets, 8.5 to ships, 6.5 to subs, and overall we're not changing that much. The hit points go up from 20 to 30, 
and you know really the corvette doesn't get much better um than it does at level one really there's no point really to upgrade these that much um uh, the only reason you would ever even want these is to either research frigates or again have them early game for that early defense or attack capability so overall i wouldn't recommend these um for like most games but in certain situations these can be pretty decent but like I said, they just don't have the capabilities that the other ships that we'll be talking about today in this video uh, really have. So this is kind of a uh, starting unit, if you would, uh, if you will, uh, in games, and really is not going to fare well at all in mid or late games because it's just going to get outranged and outgunned by all other vessels, and this vessel is not going to fare that well. Next on the list, we have the Frigate. Now this is actually a very good ship, and there's very good reason for this, because this ship is going to be your anti-aircraft ship. This is going to be what defends all vessels um, from, anti, uh, from, uh, from planes, from missiles, even helicopters, even though it doesn't do that much to helicopters. So, similar to the Corvette, and branching off from the Corvette, which means you have to research the Corvette first, um, this is going to require a level 2 naval base, and as you will see, this costs 2,000 components and 1,100 electronics, level 1. This is very expensive, first of all, and takes components instead, as will all the vessels um, in the tree apart from the Corvette, and it takes a lot of electronics. So at level 1, we are packing um, 2 attack to soft targets, 1.5 to tanks, 6 to aircraft, which is very, very good. One to helicopters because the AA isn't actually meant to hit helicopters in this game, and it really won't go much past this actually. 2.5 to missiles, which isn't that bad. 6 to ships, 3 to subs, and some infrastructural damage. So overall, this is a good ship. It can hit everything, and it has more than a point defense. It has an active anti-aircraft defense. This anti-aircraft defense at level 1 has a range of 75, and it can detect fixed wing, rotary wing, and missiles. Uh, it has standard radar detection on most ships and has a 50 attack range. So don't let the uh, anti-air range of 75 fool you. This has the same range as a level 1 Corvette at level 1. Um, it has higher hit points than the Corvette, notably. 28, and it does not change via the water type uh, between open sea and coastal waters. And it will get a speed value of 3.5 in high seas and 1.75 in coastal waters. So, at max level, what are we looking at? Well, this thing is going to be a monster at max level. It's going to be very expensive, first of all. But the stats that this thing has is amazing. It's going to do 4 to soft targets, 2.5 to hard targets, 10 to aircraft, which means a 5 stack of these can do 50 attack. 50 attack alone. If an aircraft stack hits you and attacks you directly, you can do 100 damage, which is crazy. 2 to helicopters, like I said, it doesn't improve that much. And 4 to missiles. Missiles also don't improve that much. I personally think, in my opinion, this should be buffed a little bit, maybe to like 5. Um, because cruise missiles, like, really can do insane things in naval combat. And frigates are really the only, like, counter to these. So... Honestly, in my opinion, I would buff this to 5, but 4 is decent because you cannot touch a 5 cruiser stack with cruise missiles. Or sorry, frigate stack. You're doing 8 to ships, you're doing 5 to submarines, and some infrastructural damage. Your speed is going to be increased to 4 uh, in high seas and 2 to coastal water, and your hit points are going to be 38. Now, this thing will have an attack range of 100. Um, at this level, which is crazy. That means that you can uh, rain, you can attack any ship, basically, because the max range of naval vessels is 100, and that means you can't get outranged by units in the game, which is very useful and very good for your ships. Your anti-aircraft range is also going to be 100. You're, detect you're detecting the same things and being able to hit everything. Your radar detection becomes incredibly awesome. You can detect the same ground units and same naval units, but you can detect fixed wing aircraft, signature size low, and you can detect helicopters, which is really good. It's a very good improvement because that means you can detect high level fighter aircraft like high level strike fighters 
or um, third generation uh, fighter aircraft because as I said in the aircraft video, once you reach a certain level in the fighter uh, group, they get a low signature size instead of high. And so that is very useful for detecting these aircraft and keeping your fleet safe. And these frigates can reveal stealth of aircraft. That means stealth aircraft can be spotted within the sight range of 40. Keep in mind, that does not mean that you can detect stealth in the range of 100. It is the sight range of 40 around the ship. So overall, when I'm using frigates, I will use these behind my main fleet. So if I have a bunch of cruisers and destroyers, for example, or even submarines, this frigate will be very good to have an AA circle around because, you know, you don't want your frigates to get damaged and be in the direct combat. You're going to want them behind, shielding from missiles, um, and you're also going to be wanting them to hit those aircrafts that probably hit you. Um, but sometimes it can actually be pretty good to stack one or two of these with some cruisers or destroyers if that's what you're doing or you know just have them close by because really you don't want to lose these because these are actually really important and at this level they're really uh you know they're really expensive to build so overall these are a very good ship and i would recommend these in any fleet it just depends on what your situation is and overall um these are a very worthwhile unit in the naval tech tree Next in the naval tech tree, we will have the destroyer. Now, this is going to be one of the first um, different units that we have because this is going to be one of the heavier ships um, that you will see and one of the more common ones actually. I think frigates are less of a common ship in my personal opinion because mostly, most of the time I see destroyers more often than not. So, the destroyer. This is going to be um, in short words, um, it's going to be your anti-submarine warfare ship. This is going to be for anti-submarine warfare, countering submarines. Simple as that. Now, this thing is going to require a naval base level 3 and an arms industry level 3. So this is going to require another level of your naval base, which is going to make it more expensive just because you have to put the building, and it's going to cost more components, but slightly less electronics than the frigate. This ship is packing two damage to soft targets, two to hard targets, some point defense against helicopters and fixed wing. Granted, um, I want to point out this does not get a, an active anti-aircraft system at any level. It only gets point defense. So these ships are going to be very weak against aircraft and missiles. And so you don't want to have them alone most of the time. It has a 1.3 defense rating against missiles, does eight to ships and five to submarines. Um, and it does some infrastructural damage. It can do four speed value and high seas and two in coastal waters and gets a noticeably higher 40 hit points than the other ships we've gone over so far. This thing gets an attack range of 50 to start, standard radar detection, sonar of course, and can reveal stealth of submarines. That means at level one, you can see the exact composition of the submarines, what nation uh, submarines it is, etc, uh, etc. Et so overall, this is a decent ship to go for, uh, but it's going to require, like I said, a level 3 naval base, and which will autom automatically make it harder to build. Going to max level, the ladder class, we're going to see it becomes versatile. It's going to do 4 damage to soft targets, 3 to hard targets, 4 point defense to jets, and 3 point defense to helicopters, missiles barely get any better, 1.5, it's just pitiful. Um, any yeah, cruise missiles could just wipe out a fire stack. Um, 12 to surface vessels, 15 to subs. So that means a five stack of destroyers could do 75 damage to a submarine stack, which is very, very nice. And it can do 60 to a surface vessel stack. And it's getting some, um, it is getting some infrastructural damage. And it has a speed value of 4.50 in open seas and 2.25 in coastal waters the highest we've seen so far and it gets 50 hit points so this is the highest hit point bar we've also seen so far um this is going to get obviously a 100 uh, range attack range standard radar detection sonar reveal stuff to subs and launch two cruise missiles so 10 cruise missiles can be launched from a five stack of max level destroyers now these destroyers are going to be pretty good um, in my Ukraine game, as you see here, um, I have purely destroyers 
and I have my naval officer. And I did that because what my strategy was, was I just needed some simple ships and my economy was really focused on building a strong air force and land army. So what I did to account for that was most of the time, if I was uh, in combat, let's say here in Ethiopia where I did have combat, I had a destroyer stack here and I had SAM launchers here to defend the uh, destroyers from the MPAs, the na naval patrol aircrafts that were here. Um, and it would also defend against low-level missiles that they actually had incoming, um, that I had come in combat here. Now, obviously this isn't going to be very smart, because I also had fighters. Um, but without the fighters and the SAMs, I was very vulnerable. Um, even, you know, to simple aircraft and to simple missiles. So that's why... Um, destroyers are kind of bad by themselves. You want to have them on frigates or cruisers. Or, you know, you have to have some sort of sort of protection for them um, to be at least usable in the game. Um, they're going to be very versatile against most things, like I said. Their weakness is basically anti-aircraft, and that's where frigates can really come in strong to help destroyers do well um, with their anti-aircraft ability. Because where frigates lack in anti-submarine warfare and detection is where destroyers... Um, strive and they're not that bad against surface vessels either they're decent they're kind of like the AFV the armored fighting vehicle of the ship tech tree they're great but not that great and they're not great by themselves so that's what you need to take into consideration when using the destroyer next we have in my opinion one of the best and one of the most popular ships in the game it is going to be the branch off of the destroyer because the destroyer is required to research this. It is going to be the cruiser. This ship is going to be, and you've noticed a pattern here, the frigate is anti-aircraft, destroyers is anti-submarine. Can you guess what this is? You probably did. It is anti-ship. This is going to be anti-surface vessel. Once you get in here, you can see exactly why. This is going to require a level 4 naval base. This is going to require a lot of investment in resources just for the building. And it's going to require an arms industry level 1. Now, speaking about investment, 3,500 components for one ship and 1.2,000 electronics for one ship. And this is level 1. We are getting 3 damage against soft targets, 2 to hard targets, two attack and defense against fixed wing and three attack and defense against helicopters so this is the second ship that actually gets an active anti-air defense system which is actually really useful for these things because they need to be protected obviously and it actually makes them very versatile not just to uh you know land and sea but also air targets as well it gets one attack and defense against missiles and 10 to ships level one this is the highest value we've seen and this is why cruisers are amazing against ships and feared by players using surface vessels because they're just so deadly now they only get two against submarines which means this thing's weakness is going to be submarines this is where destroyers and sonar come in handy because you'll see why in a minute this thing does some infrastructural damage as well 4.50 just like the destroyers speed value in high seas and 2.25 in coastal waters and a huge hit point value of 50 at level 1. That's the same hit point number as a max level destroyer, which is crazy. Now, this thing, unlike the other ones, starts with a range of 75. It gets an anti-air um, range of 50, can detect all types of aircraft. It can detect uh, standard detection, it has standard radar, and can launch two cruise missiles at level 1. This means a level 1 cruiser is very versatile in many ways. Now, at max level, well, at level 3, I want to point something out. At level 3, this thing is getting 100 range. 100 range only comes when you get destroyers max level and frigates max level. Destroyers level 4, aka the second tech level, only get 75, and so do frigates. This thing at level 3, which is the second tech level, gets 100, which makes them very, very dangerous. At level 5, this ship gets monstrous. It's going to be a lot more expensive at 4,500 components and 1.7,000 electronics, but the difference is clear. Your soft target damage is 5, your armor damage is 4, 
4 attack and defense against fixed wing, 5.5 against helicopters, which means these are really good against helicopters actually, and pretty decent against planes. The missile damage doesn't change. These are very, um, you know, they are very vulnerable to missiles, and this is where frigates will come in handy to help protect them. 22 ships. That's double what level 1 was, and the highest value you'll see anywhere on this list for the 5 ships we're going over. That means a 5 stack of cruisers can do 100 damage to a ship stack, and that is crazy. 5 to subs, which isn't horrible, and it has some decent infrastructural damage. It's going the same speed and has a hit point value of 75, which is just tanky. One hit from a 5 stack of max level cruisers can take out one max level cruiser and that shows you how deadly it is. It can also kill two destroyers and almost even three frigates to put that in perspective. Now, like I said, where this thing's weakness is, is it does not have sonar detection, which means destroyers are going to want to accompany this and you're going to also want to have anti-aircraft run this potentially or have them in a convoy tactic, like I said. Um, I don't know if I've ever said that before, but convoy tactic is basically where you have the AA of multiple ships um, covering every other ship basically in a convoy. So you can have cruisers by themselves have AA over all the rest of the cruisers, so it can be very deadly to aircraft as well. But this thing's weakness is missiles and subs, so that's why sonar is very good. This thing can launch three cruise missiles, which means a five stack of these can launch 15. This means you can uh, have a huge launch platform from these cruisers, which makes them very deadly. This is one of the best units in the game in my opinion, just because of what it can do. It can attack, it, it, it has an attack against aircraft. It does insane amounts of damage against ships, which is what most people use, because most people don't actually use submarines. Mo some do, but most use surface vessels, and most of the time people use destroyers, uh, most of the time people will have low-level cruisers or even frigates and the cruisers will just eat all of that up If you use hit and run tactics, they're not gonna have a good day and even against ground targets 20 a uh, five stack of these max level can do 20 damage to armor and 25 to infantry That's really good for uh, you know a uh, bombardment which can cover landings of troops, etc, etc So overall these are very good very expensive, but very worthwhile and once you see these things start to work, they will work. I mean, when they're in action, they're going to put in some serious hits to the enemy, and overall, in my opinion, are one of the best ships in the game. One of the things, again, you want to keep in mind, um, just to reiterate, is that the frigates are great against aircraft, weak against submarines, destroyers, great against submarines, decent against ships, and weak against aircraft. Cruisers, okay against aircraft, weak against missiles, great against ships, weak against subs, at least because they can't see them. If you have something that can detect the subs, these things aren't too bad, so keep that in mind. Last but not least, we're going to have one of the rarest units that you will probably ever see in the game. And by that I mean you will probably never see this, or even rarely see it. It is going to be the aircraft carrier. Now there are a couple reasons why you don't see this. One is because it's the most expensive naval unit in the game. It's going to require a, level, a naval base level 5, an arms industry level 1. It is going to require 3.25 thousand components, 750 rare materials, 1,250 electronics. Now, the aircraft carrier is kind of weird, and most people don't know how to use it, and there are some features that are left wanted by the player base that this thing has, and it just ends up being not used a lot for these reasons. So this thing gets no attack against land, in fact, it gets no attack at all. The only attack this thing actually gets is against fixed wing aircraft, rotary wing aircraft, and missiles. It's doing, at level 1, two damage to aircraft to jets four to helicopters and two to missiles and the damage on the ships and subs actually you as you can see the range of the aa is 26 for level one 
there's no range and i believe why this is is because i don't think this thing can attack at range i think this thing can only attack or just like i think this thing can only do damage to ships or subs if you make direct contact with another stack which you don't really want to do so one unique thing actually about this thing besides the fact that it can carry aircraft is that this thing This thing is actually slow, obviously, with a speed value of 30, uh, 3 in high seas, and 1.5 in coastal waters. It has a massive hit point uh, box, and I mean massive, 100 hit points. This thing is a tank. This is the tank of the sea. At level 1, as you can see here, the capacity, this thing can hold 5, which means it can hold 5 aircraft or helicopters that are compatible with landing on the aircraft carrier. These are going to be naval based fighters, naval AWACS, certain officers, and helicopters. Not re regular fighters and regular strike fighters and stuff like that cannot land on the aircraft carrier actually. Um, so there is not much else to note there. Um, at max level, and every tech level, it goes up by 5. So the second tech level gets 10 the third tech level aka this one max level gets 15 basically every tech level increases the amount of aircraft you can hold by five so the max level aircraft carrier can hold 15 aircraft um which means it can be actually pretty versatile if you use it correctly and in the right situations and usually those situations do not even happen at max level the aircraft carrier's radar does not change it gets the standard radar um, it gets higher damage at 5 to jets, 9 to helicopters, and 5 to missiles, which actually, ma which actually makes it decent uh, with anti-aircraft. And it has a 75% um, anti-air range. And that isn't horrible. Its hit points become 150, which just makes it even tankier. It's unbelievable how long it takes to kill one of these things, especially in a stack of other ships. And it gets insanely more expensive, which is why... At this point, if you had this level of aircraft carrier, you you would have want um, you would have wanted to have them built by now. So there's not much really to note about these things. One of the biggest things that I feel about them personally is that they're just not very good because they're rarely ever used. I've only used them a couple times, and I think one of those times was actually as Israel when I had you know strike fighters max level. So I uh, basically, you know, just built a bunch of F-18s and had a couple of carrier strike groups and just had them with the fleet covering. Um, but really, this thing isn't very useful because something that the community has been wanting for a long time is um, a feature that the game is lacking. And one thing that many players question, the aircraft carrier cannot land friendly aircraft on it which doesn't make that much sense to me um i know it might take some effort for them to put in the game or it might be to prevent some trolling like people putting aircraft on an aircraft carrier and then the person not taking them off just to be a troll um but one of the features that would make the carrier good is the one i just told you about where friendly aircraft can go on an aircraft carrier and that might mean that we might see the aircraft carry a lot more in action if that were the case but it's the fact that you have to you know you have to have your own aircraft and you have to level up the aircraft to make them good you have to level up the carrier to make the capacity higher if the feature was as i said that was in the game um if the feature was in the game then somebody maining navy like an island could go over an aircraft carrier and somebody with a huge air force could have aircraft to put on it and that would make the team dynamic so good but it's just a feature that we don't have and i don't know if it's ever going to happen in the game um and so there's a lot of things left to be desired uh and you know when talking about the aircraft carrier so really um it's it's the king of the sea but it's you know we the game misses out on the potential to make the aircraft carrier good and fun 
So this isn't really going to be a unit I recommend at all, usually, unless you're just trying to have a good time like I usually do. Um, you know, and, and really it's not going to be a useful in many situations. So in my opinion, I think that some of the best ships in this tech tree and really the only ones you should focus on are the center three, the frigate, destroyer, and cruiser. Now there are going to be different variations where you want to set these up, but the corvette is only good for really early game, and other than that, I would X this out as not being very useful, and the aircraft carrier for not being very useful. The aircraft carrier is not really good in any situation apart from very, very unique ones, or very long game situations. The center three here are what you're going to want, and I would not really pay attention to this. The only reason I would get this obviously is for early game or if you're researching frigates. So if you disagree, that is fine. You can comment about it. If you agree or if, I'm, or if I miss something, please let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more on the channel or if you're enjoying my content. It really helps me out and it really keeps me motivated to keep doing this. I'm sorry I've let you guys down for not uploading that much, but I promise it will get better. And I promise we'll all make it through this hard time that we're going through right now. Um, you know, and if you want to dislike the video because you didn't like it, um, that's fine too. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this guide and hopefully it helps at least somebody. That's my only goal, like I said, with these videos. And I'm, again, so glad you guys are enjoying the series and I will try to finish it as soon as I can. Guys, have a beautiful day and I will see you guys in the sub and missile video. Take care.